the usual operational updates, and then we're going to do quick two-minute reports from the different committees. Um, we have a, an agenda item um, on marketing. We're going to look at the licensing working group um, work, which we then hopefully have to get to approve. Um, and then there's a, um, a section from the, um, you know, around uh, new board members and, you know, electing new board members. So, so okay, we're going to talk about that here today. Sorry? Go, uh, the governance topic. Um, yeah, it's I, not on the agenda for today, I, but we think we raised it via email. I, be, I believe that it was supposed to be a, a, a um, an online vote, but if you want to talk about it, I can talk about it. We'll see how much time we have, maybe. Okay. Excellent. All right, you ready to dive in? Operational Okay. So uh, the board packet uh, this month in January looks uh, is full of KPIs and metrics from 2014 because uh, we just are closing out 2014. So last time we'll see the metrics in this format um, uh, as you go throughout. But um, just wanted to highlight some of the um, some of the things that happened in 2014 as a whole um, because I think we had a lot of growth and a lot of change uh, in the year and we could talk about December on its own, but which is supposed to be the end of the year, right? Look back and do that. So, so we did. Um, so a few things to, to really highlight and underscore. Uh, you know, we built a tech team in 2014. We went from two people working on uh, engineering for Drupal.org to 11 and a half. Um, to the whole person. She just works on half time. And uh, that is huge. Uh, and the amount of work that they have been able to um, contribute uh, has been really remarkable given the fact that um, it really wasn't a fully staffed team until until really Q4 this year. So, um, so we we did that, um, and they've done they've made some really important uh, important contributions this year. Um, you know, working on commit messages profiles in particular have gone through a complete metamorphosis and continue to evolve. And I think that um, that's uh, the way that we can use profiles to you know incent contribution and some of the other conversations we want to have with the projects have been really. Um, uh, have been really impacted by the work they've, they've done. Um, and we've also been able to contribute to a couple of uh, important release blockers for Drupal 8, so, so that's great. Uh, but the most important contribution, I think, from the engineering team is to produce a roadmap for what Drupal.org will look like in 2015 and the work they're going to do. Um, and getting um, a vision out there for um, our key volunteers and the rest of the community to understand uh, and, and uh, so they know where the focus is. And they also know how they can contribute to that vision, I think is really key. So the work of that engineering team with the um, working groups to produce that has been really I think, impactful and important. Um, of course, also in 2014, two big DrupalCon events uh, in Amsterdam and in Austin. Um, so you know, over 5,000 people between those two events um, and put the planning together to bring us to Bogota in February, or Bogota. Hotel, get the accent in the right place. Um, so uh, I think the big innovation on the Drupal cons is that we really started, you know, we put a lot of measurements in place this year to try to understand better what the levers are for success at those events uh, and to really begin to reshape our thinking around the cons. We have a lot more data now than we did in the past and we're just starting to apply that learning for, for 2015 and beyond. We also launched Drupal Jobs this year, which is something that the community really asked for um, and is also part of our plan for diversifying our revenue and making the organization more sustainable on the whole. Um, and there's you know, lots of work to continue to do on that. Josh tells me every day, I think we need like six months more work of development on Drupal Jobs. <laughs> He's been saying that for six months now. I said it before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot more that we could and should be doing with that, but it continues to sort of steadily grow um, organically. And now that we have a product owner for that on staff in Carrie, who's at the back of the room. Hello, Carrie. Um, I think we're going to see a lot more progress um, on that front. Um, and, and, you know, leading into, we, we really did put more groundwork in place to diversify our revenue streams. And I think that that's important both for the sustainability of the organization, like I said, but more importantly, because there's too much pressure put on the cons to deliver to the bottom line of the organization. And that means we don't have the freedom to really design those events to do what we need them to do all the time, right? Like there's a, a non-revenue related um, 
there are non-revenue related goals for that uh, for those events that we aren't really able to try to experiment with or focus on um, when the bottom line matters so much because they're such a huge part of our um, of our budget. So, so this is going to be really key for us uh, and allow us to um, rethink cons, I think, in a much uh, freer way. Um, Joe and the marketing team put out a ton of content this year um, and also tried to expose content we have much more broadly. Um, so we have all these amazing landing pages that um, um, curate and collect some of the best content from the Drupal universe out there. Uh, again, I think a great collaboration between what the community does and how the association can partner to make that happen. Um, but then also actually created amazing content on those um, on those sites as well. Um, you know how do you, how do you use Drupal for media sites and you know other topics like that. Um, and those that content has really um, helped to um, start to drive more traffic in a targeted way across the site, which I think is going to be really useful for us in understanding who our community is and also then you know spreading the word and evangelizing Drupal in the future. So. There's a lot of messages there. Um, and then some of the most foundational work I think we did this year, um, and, and this you know, really driven by the board, is really seeing a new vision, mission, and value statements for the association. We're just so much closer to understanding what the work is that we do and why we do it and how we do it because of those things. Um, and I think it is, um, uh, I know it's really impactful for the staff to have those tools um, to, to, to reflect on and use in their planning and decision making. Um, but I hope it's really useful for the community as well. So we did a lot this year. That's my main That's update. crazy to see all that spelled out. It's just like, wow, we didn't have any of that this time last year. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I just I want to underscore, I know we had a lot of bumps in the road, um, you know, through throughout the year. Like, we're super not thrilled with the, you know, Net Promoter Score for Drupal Amsterdam, for example, right? Like, there's lots of things that happen that weren't mm -hmm. great, um, but I think, um, you know, I hope, I hope the biggest thing is that the community um, that we are a part of understands that, um, you know, we're going to make mistakes along the way, but we're earnestly trying to learn from them and to execute better and better as we go. And I think that the partnerships that we're forging in the community to do all of this work are helping, you know, reset those expectations. So, um, so yeah, so we got a lot of work done. And, and just to underscore again, it wasn't just staff. We worked with the community and all of this, um, you know, scores of volunteers put in a lot of time and effort to make all of this happen. Um, and it's been a real joy to um, get to know those folks and, and uh, work closely with them. So I just want to thank them for their time. So that's really the big uh, the big takeaway. Um, I did want to point out just a, a couple of other things, too, um, particularly on the um, engineering side of things from, from the, well, let me get to the engineering side of things. Uh, so on mission objectives, objectives for the year, uh, just so you know, we do not have audited numbers yet. I think we wouldn't consider any of these numbers final numbers. Things will shift. Some of the details will shift, but you know, hopefully not in the six-figure kind of shifts, but in the like uh, four or five-figure kind of shifts, that's reasonable. Um, as we actually close out the year and work with um, our accounting firm to, to do so. Um, but uh, we revised our budget to you know, better reflect about uh, reality in the middle of the year uh, to set an annual goal of a deficit spend of $564,000. And as we've talked about in the last couple of months, we're definitely going to beat that uh, fairly significantly, which does, in fact, put us in a decent place for um, the 2015 budget that we passed. So we can all feel comfortable about that. Um, and that is good stuff. Um, the one area on the finance side uh, where we're in the yellow is the um, growing the non-con revenue. We had um, a little bit of softness in the supporting partner, Drupal Jobs, a couple other places. We didn't quite get to where we wanted to get there um, for the non-con revenue, but it is still significant growth year over year. We're on track to continue to diversify revenue. Uh, in terms of part of a strong community, um, we shot for 8,000 folks. That was based on a huge Austin goal number that we did not make. Um, but we still, you know, over 6,000 people engaged in our programs this year, um, which feels fantastic. Um, our membership numbers, um, I think we're figuring out the ratio of number of members and how that corresponds to revenue a little bit better. 
So the overall number was down um, from the goal, uh, but our renewal rate uh, hit, which is great. So people are coming back at the kind of rate that we want to see to be able to sustain and grow membership, um, which is fantastic. Um, and revenue, um, mem uh, revenue for individual and org memberships exceeded goal this year. Um, our supporting partner memberships, uh, we did have a little quarter, fourth quarter softness around that. So we're in the orange, but, um, but we're still, uh, even that number, again, uh, although it was soft on the overall goal, is an increase year over year from 2013 to 2014. So it continues to grow. Um, lots of camp fiscal sponsorships. Um, and then Drupal adoption, these, like, these are staying the same as we've seen all year, right? Um, until we have a, a Drupal 8, we're not going to have lots of Drupal 8 sites. <laughs> Those kinds of things. Um, so, um, Cons, we talked about a little bit, attendance is low, uh, we had, um, but we, we really, um, we set some metrics this year and started to understand who's coming to cons, we know who that audience is in a better way now. We met the goals we set, but more importantly, we really understand what that audience is about. Um, and the one area for us was the, the net promoter score, um, to sort of understand what our baseline was. We set a number of 70, but we were like, shoulder shrug, who knows what that's gonna be, because we've never tried to measure it before. Um, Austin was 53, Amsterdam was 25. We've talked about that in the past. Um, in uh, one area to highlight is going to be Bogota, which is coming up, uh, DrupalCon Latin America. Uh, in in, uh, in true Latin fashion, those registrations are coming in late. <laughs> On the later side. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it really actually did start to pick up um, after the New Year, specifically after the 6th, which was one more religious holiday <laughs> that we had to get past after the New Year. Yeah, uh, and so uh, things are definitely starting to pick up. Um, what was the number last night? I can't remember. Like 143. 143, something like that. Um, registration. So again, our goal is to get, uh, you know, to 400. Um, I actually have this thing where I'm like, that seems possible to me. I imagine we're going to have a lot of walk-up registrations, but, um, you know, it's probably likely we won't hit 400, but we're going to get in the several hundred kind of range. So, how many do we need to since late registrations are more expensive? So how many do we need to make our budget work? Uh, one of the things we decided to do is to extend the regular registration rate at this point, um, because the, the difference between early, um, Early, regular, and late was only ten dollars at a time because it's such a price sensitive market. market. Um, so we're, it really doesn't help us. Okay, great. You know, to, to get that late registration money. Yeah. So we're on that um, on the Drupal um, on the Drupal.org side. Uh, just a couple of things that I really want to um, highlight uh, that have happened here. Um, this year, uh, we put a half a person, um, a whole person half time on, <laughs> on uh, responding to Drupal.org support requests. Uh, so Liz has been doing that. We, uh, we opened up a, an official channel with um, uh, the support software we use, um, and she's also in the queues. Um, one great advantage of that is that people's sort of like issues like, uh, you know, password related and other kinds of sort of simple uh, issues that are a, you know, one of those like chores for volunteers, but you know, the staff should just sort of pick that up. Like those things are getting responded to really well and, and uh, quickly now. Um, so we're actually, um, we're getting it, um, you know, 82% of issues within 48 hours, these, these sort of core issues, which is really a much better response time than we have had previously. Um, the added benefit of that has been that she's been able to feed, you know, what are the themes from those issues to the Drupal.org engineering team. So she takes part in their meetings and is able to say, like, you know, hey, have you thought about this? Because I've seen this issue over and over and over again, which has been great. Cool. Uh-huh. Um, the issues around commits, contributors, comments, those things are all um, driven by the cyclical nature of a release. Uh, so those have been in the red all year, and we finished out the year in the red uh, for sure. But... Um, we are um, in the green in some interesting areas. So for the first, like rolling into December, uh, test bot performance finally got good enough to beat our goal on average for the year. Which Yay. Is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really thrilled about that. Um, and you know that's really been another just like key collaboration between staff and community members, um, and the staff taking on the existing architecture and really being able to focus on that um, while the community members have been able to provide guidance and support but also 
um, instead of the day-to-day -day maintenance, um, but also be focused on re-engineering test spots to be, you know, to, to begin with. So. I'll give you two cool stats on that. Please do. Uh, one cool stat is that's a year <laughs> average, which means it really was awful at the beginning of the year, yep. and by the end of the year, we're just a little over 20 minutes, which is pretty awesome. So 60. And we started where? Uh, like 120. 20 minutes, over I think. Yeah. It was over 100. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say is during the recent uh, global sprint, uh, we actually uh, we, we had global coverage. Uh, our developer in Wales was uh, firing up, uh, <laughs> go Wales, Mike's, Mike's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we had at one point uh, 20 test bot machines running, uh, which that's not a single test on each one of those, but it's, it's the most we've ever done at a uh, at a time, so we were able to scale up to that as the need demanded and scale back down, and it was really, really successful. Nice. How the cloud is supposed That's to awesome. work? Yeah. Elasticity. <laughs> yeah, oh, Holly, your, your buzzword bingo. Of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can say how the cloud buzzword. Um, all right, so test spots are great. Um, also, although we did not end the year in the green on case response time, um, I do want to point out that it's been dropping dramatically over the last few months um, as um, you know, we're fully staffed on the engineering, engineering team now. Uh, in August, it was 3.5 seconds, um, and in December, it was 3.08, right? So, um, and every month from you know August, it was dropping. Um, as we improved hardware, we moved some services over to, um, uh, off of our own hardware and onto other tools, you know, we included CDN, and all those kinds of things help contribute to a uh, better page response time. So we didn't get it for the average for the year, but we did hit the goal by the end of the year, which felt really good to get there. And so. we're shifting to reporting those as health metrics next year. So it's going to be percent change month to month. And the goal is a monthly average, not a yearly average in aggregate. Because yeah. yeah, that's kind of that's meaningless. meaningless. Yeah. I'm sorry, can you help me understand the three seconds? Is that I go to load a page on the front page of the lateral, it takes three seconds to load? It, yeah, it used to take over three seconds to load. <laughs> it used to take like four seconds to load. It's time to first bite. Yeah. Three seconds is time to first bite? Mm -hmm. No. Three seconds is full page load. We'll, we'll pick 300 up. milliseconds is time to first bite. Cool. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Okay, and uh, the last metric I want to point out in Drupal.org, uh, we have this uh, percent of developers satisfied with Drupal.org, which is a, a metric we're only capturing annually right now. I think we've discussed this rolling over to an NPS score that we collect at various points along the way, repeatedly throughout the year. But right, we did a survey recently <coughs> asked a question, um, and 95%, we can put them in the satisfied bucket, which actually aligns with the user research we did, which is that people feel like it like adequately does what they need it to do. And that is not to say that people don't find little things all over the place that they want to, I guess punch in the face is not the right word, but like, <laughs> it's really oh, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, it was, it was good. Um, I mean, 32.31% were very satisfied. 62.31% uh, were somewhat satisfied. We only had 260 responses to this question on the survey, so I don't take it as a whole. But it does, like I said, it aligns with the user research that we did. Is there a selection bias here? Like, did we ask the question on Drupal.org and thereby eliminate asking people on GitHub and stuff like that? No. We no. drove people to the survey from all over the place, social channels, uh, email. We cool. did. Uh, drive them from Drupal.org, but the traffic from there wasn't noticeably higher than anywhere else. So okay, there sounds like they had to be Drupal aware to get. To get to get to I would say that's definitely yeah, true. but that's okay because Drupal.org is for Drupal aware, like the yeah. developers. It, you know, they have to be Drupal aware to use it. Yeah, I mean, like we don't look at that number and we're like, oh, good, the job is done. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're yeah, definitely yeah. matching it like that, right? But we're we're also, it's... Um, but just like Jeff has stated in the past that his whole team hates it, and, mm -hmm. you know, like, and so I'm just curious, like, <laughs> yeah. is that a widespread opinion and we missed it because... Anyone's we listening. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, board meeting, so we call that. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's that... So 
a lot of times we, we run these questions and what it actually does is make us ask more questions, right? And yeah. we looked at this and we were like, well, clearly we don't think this is a sign of dissatisfaction. Like, like people don't want anything to change, right? And satisfied is kind of a neutral word, right? Like, yeah. Um, and does it, if you think of it in the context, does it do what you need it to do? Um, yeah, if you're doing most of your development on GitHub and you get what you need from Drupal.org, you could be perfectly satisfied right. with it, yeah. right? that's a good point. So yeah. there's not lots of ways for us to look at that. But yeah, that this still was, check the box. That was really yeah, so it's just, a, but it's an interesting number to look at for us to then, like, you know, prompt other questions to think about. Yep. Would be interesting to know how the other personas feel as well. So this is developers, but mm -hmm. I don't know if we have that data or not. But. Actually, I, uh, we do have the data on this, and it doesn't span out to the full 260, but this isn't just developers. The oh, list not. of people that reported to this and the uh, roles that they identified themselves with is something like, Mm, I can't remember the breakdown. There are more key audiences that we can yeah, it's break huge heavy developer though, so. Yeah. 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 I say close to probably not enough data points. Yeah. yeah. But it's a good. Uh, it was a good exercise to go through. Right. So. Mm -hmm. So that was an interesting one to talk about. Uh, so Drupal.org back in the same place we've been talking about all year long. So no surprises there. Um, <coughs> and uh, let's see. The rest of our, our metrics this year, you know, uh, global training days, um, community summit, all those kinds of things continue to be good. Um, we're going to continue to look at how we push some of those goals forward in, in 2015. Um, marketing, um, again, we talked about membership um, already uh, in, the, in the key objectives, but on the marketing side, um, you know, again, uh, our metrics here that we set were based on the assumption of the D8 launch, so we didn't get really anywhere near any of these goals for the year. Um, but the, um, the marketing team, as I said, it was all of that branded content, the landing pages, all the things they've been setting up, they've really, they've really set themselves up to be able to support um, a Drupal 8 launch and all of the content around that in a much smarter way, um, which is fantastic. You know, it's not like we just have a D8 landing page at this point. We have a bunch of persona-based landing pages, specific use case kinds of pages on the site, content that supports it. So. Um, when D8 rolls out, we've got um, an infrastructure that we can build on to help um, support that launch. So is that <clears throat> something that uh, remains fresh and ready to go? Uh, and then related question, is it is a silver lining that the delays are making that potentially better? Like you have more time to get Let's stuff yes ready? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the upside here. I mean, in terms of freshness, the, the content being dated is high level enough where I, I don't know that that would happen, but uh, we will certainly be monitoring it to make sure that it's that it's, there's nothing that's changed. For right. example, we right. we've back. been done adding features since the time. Yeah. 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 But I think to Jeff's point, I think I mean I love the content that's there today. I think it's actually really good. Um, but I think it could be extended more with more. Um, it's still a lot about the features, which I think mm -hmm. is great, but. Um, more about the benefits of Drupal in general and the security things that we mentioned today. I think there's room to, I mean, I think Drupal 8 launch will be our biggest event in the history of Drupal. And it's really an opportunity to convince people of Drupal and, and not just Drupal 8, because I think a lot of people that may have a bomb, you know, gave up on Drupal like five years ago or had a bad experience, they may come back to the site with Drupal 8 as the hook but we need to convince them of Drupal as a whole. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that as yeah. thinking okay. during the marketing presentation. So, I mean, that's the, that's the big thing. That's the, those are all the main talking points I have for, um, for the update. Awesome. Well, I wanted to... Did somebody see that question? I did, and I... If you want to know where the public board docs are, I can bring them on. There are so many that they're in the private. They go public when we approve them. No, this these materials should be in the public folder. Oh. Uh, and so, uh, yes, Peter, there are public board docs. They should be in the public folder. Um, and I, there's some possibility I did not do that, but I think I did. So I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you um, to you know the staff for. You know, 2014 was a, by all means, our best year. <laughs> to me, it's actually very cool to see. I mean, obviously, we're 
not hitting all our goals, but we're, we are hitting a lot of goals, yeah. which we didn't hit last year. And it's also cool to see like the Tesla discussion was kind of cool because you know, that was like in a horrible state. And if we decide to sort of focus on fixing something, we can actually do fix it and fix it pretty fast and have a, have a really big impact the performance uh, on the too, community. Right, so, overall site performance is dramatic. Exactly. So yeah. it's really cool. Um, and so yeah, excited for next year and doing more of these things. <laughs> and to um, your point, Dries, last year we didn't have goals, right? Right. Or, so, or fewer. Fewer, <laughs> yeah. So it's good. Yeah. But it, it, so we're doing way better from now to great. Yeah. 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 Well, it's important. Wait, All right. By the way, yes, Peter, the stuff is in the public folder. Yeah, he got him. He got him. Okay. All right. So let's let's do the um, the updates from the board committee, and let's just use the order that's in the in the doc. Revenue. Yes. So, <laughs> well, we're rolling into the new year um, with some really strong plans and some um, some real growth objectives. Uh, but we have uh, been investing in staff. So uh, the nice thing is we have Jess Nelson here, who is our new sales operations manager, and yeah, so she's actually here to onboard some of that new staff. We've uh, grown the team with the, another uh, junior uh, sales rep who is going to focus on the Drupal shop business with Johanna. And we are um, also making sure that as we sell more that we can really fulfill and get strong renewal rates, make our customers really happy. So we have two fulfillment coordinators we just brought on board. And uh, so Jess is training them this week. Uh, we're also uh, going to be bringing on a dig digital ads sales person to help us grow that line of the business that Carrie uh, Lucina is driving. Uh, she's putting a lot of products together and uh, we're really excited to um, start working on those initiatives. Uh, but I think the, the other big thing that uh, I'm excited about uh, that we're working on this week is the Drupal 8 Accelerate fundraising campaign that the board is taking on. And we're going to be uh, talking about that tomorrow um, as the board comes together and kicking off that campaign as well. Um, so we're doing a lot of investing in uh, sales and marketing this year so that we can grow our revenues. Uh, what I really like is that we have the people in place to have a scientific approach to really monitor our progress on a, in a very granular way. So, um, for example, Jess is putting together uh, a lot of metrics with through sales, Salesforce. So we have a lot of insight there um, to understand what kind of leads are coming in and how they're converting into sales and the time for that. And... Uh, we also are coming together as a team uh, using a, a revenue performance management tool just to really have a team discussion of what's working, where do we need to pivot and course correct, and we're doing that every month, and just had that first discussion. And, um, you know, we're just putting a lot of the processes in place to make sure we're on track and to make decisions as a team of how to make sure we're capturing the revenue in the right way. Questions? So yeah, let's move on to governance. Uh, the governance committee didn't uh, meet this last month. However, we did uh, send out an email to the to the board uh, with the language changes to terms that uh, were requested last uh, last board meeting. So if folks have the uh, not if folks when folks have the uh, the uh, the time to uh, just get in there, uh, please feel free to comment. And uh, we're looking for a uh, uh, a motion to accept changes, second, and a vote. And these are again about um, term limits. Term limits. Yeah. Terms. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> finance. So the finance committee didn't meet this month, but as Holly already said, um, we're, you know, we think 2014 is going to end well. Um, we, you know, we think we're close. We're not. The numbers aren't final yet, and the budget um, is up for final board approval for 2015. Have been approved and, and, it's, and it's up publicly. Oh, yes, yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, the executive committee, um, we didn't meet either. So I think we can just move on to marketing. Okay. You want to bundle these that along with the, with the well, recap Gina, and the plan? <clears throat> Gina Montoya, the new committee chair, is on the line, and I thought she could pipe in and say hello. You're still there, Gina? Yes, I am. Hello. Um, I'm excited to meet you all this way. Um, I have a little bit of an update. I'm making some both calls to try and gather a committee, so that's where we're at right now, and I'm working with Joe to develop a plan, and I'm very excited to be here. Hi. 
Hello. Welcome. Very excited to have you. Thank you. All right. Can we drive, or you want to keep working? Why don't I? I think I'm going to stand up right here, so I can talk to my back to the slides. Okay. So, quick recap of 2014. Just wanted to hit a couple of highlights. we did have an organization rebrand, as, as most of you know. Um, it was pretty obvious that a lot of our branding was kind of all over the place and there wasn't a lot of consistency. And when you're trying to drive awareness across our programs, um, that's not a good thing. So we did um, undertake that. And I, I think uh, we have a much nicer look and feel now. Uh, we also redesigned the badges. That's part of that whole look and feel um, rework. And uh, we met our. Um, our revenue goal by Q3, we did not meet the number of um, of members goal, but we did meet the revenue goal. So that was a that was a win. Um, another thing we tried in 2014 was uh, membership campaigns. Uh, we tried a variety of campaigns, and at the end, we did discover that 38 percent of our new and renews directly led to one of those campaigns. Um, so that is something that we're definitely going to look at doing again in 2015. We introduced branded content. Uh, Holly alluded to this. We have a number of explainer videos, so explaining our uh, our programs, as well as an overview video of the uh, Drupal Association, which I think most of you have seen. We did a couple of white papers, uh, several infographics, um, and we'll continue that in 2015 as well. It was a great year for social media growth. Uh, we surpassed uh, all of our goals for uh, social media. I have to give a lot of credit to a couple of community volunteers, Paul Johnson uh, and Corey, uh, Carrie Gordon specifically, who really do a great job helping us on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, and a lot of just more interaction, um, kind of a social CRM approach where we're actually helping people on social media um, and more interesting content. Uh, DrupalCon marketing, we tried some new things. We actually did some uh, Google AdWords work. Uh, had um, really great numbers in terms of ad impressions and clicks. Uh, what was di- more difficult to measure was uh, did those impressions and clicks actually lead to registration? So the jury's still out, but um, but it was a, definitely a, a worthwhile thing, I, at, at least to create awareness, I think. Uh, we did um, uh, different kinds of content for DrupalCon, so infographics talking about the types of attendees and things like that. And we also uh, created more targeted and more frequent email communications. Um, definitely not trying to s- spam people. You know, we want to segment our list to make sure we're hitting people with the right uh, content. I think we were successful doing that last year. Are we segmenting today or no? Yes. Right. Yeah, we have lots and lots of different ways of segmenting. Um, the issue is a lot of it happens after the fact when they actually opt in. Um, they aren't necessarily doing it then. We're having to do it later, but that's that's changing. Uh, Holly alluded to the Drupal 8 content on Drupal.org. So even though we're pre-RC1, uh, you know, 683 page views of the content on Drupal.org, 12,000 uh, infographic downloads. We just put a Google Analytics goal on that presentation that Angie created. So we'll start tracking uh, the, the, the overview. No, that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I know that's been viewed a ton of times, um, but we did just put the goal. Uh, I have to that. I have to do some work on that too because I, their old one people I'm getting my email is filled with people requesting access to the old one, so oh. I have to somehow put a pointer on that to the that will help a lot. What is it that they're looking for in the old one? Because I think I have an old blog post somewhere that talked about it. Uh, I don't know. Okay. But anyway, that old link is still floating around somewhere. Oh, I got you. There's, somebody, there's a link out there. Yeah, there. so okay. I'll fix that. Gotcha. That'll help. It'll be harder to track, I think, because I've seen other, I've seen people download it <laughs> and then <laughs> customize it. <laughs> Which but is that's great. Fine. Well, that's that is, it's that is fine. Yeah. Just the numbers. I don't know. Because yeah. people go to it and it's like, oh, I don't understand anything of CMI, so I'm just going to remove these slides. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think what we can look at is clicks. So well, people who actually view the presentation, then that's probably as good as it's going to get. Same thing with the infographics. I've seen agencies pro- like show me slides yeah. that come from there. Yeah, it's very, it's very good. Yeah. <laughs> so you go, huh, I know what you got that. Yeah, I did the same thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drupal.org has a ton of Google juice. 
which is great. So when we have some content that we you know put some thought into, uh, yeah, we we are the top result for Drupal 8 and pretty much every other thing that we've created like an actual landing page for. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, Phil Boulevard, who started in the middle of 2015, has done a fantastic job creating new pages, and a lot of those pages have ads on them, which is important for our revenue goals. Uh, and you can see there some, some great uh, improvement there in the pages that serve those ads. Uh, and I talked about email. Um, we did about an email a week in 2014, which was a significant increase over 2013. Email is by far our number one channel in terms of engagement and uh, popularity. Uh, Lee Carver, our content writer, she works in the case study queue, and she did a great job getting the uh, queue down to under five open issues. It was, there were many, many more than that when she first took that on. So. Kudos to her. Uh, so 2015, before I get into 2015, any questions or comments about 2014? Is there um, like a, a calendar or a list of all content? Is there some sort of content map? Like a, a editorial calendar? Anything that would like allow us to review um, everything. I don't have that today, but <laughs> I can give you a link to our editorial calendar, which does everything. Else. We've actually got a couple of documents, one's like a higher level here are the big things happening, and then there's a lower level. And Joe, the content strategy work that we're going to do an update on tomorrow is also going to touch on doing a full sitemap piece, and this obviously will be included in that. So. Good point. And it, that, that's another great point. Everything I'm going to talk about here, um, the marketing team is very much in lockstep with engineering and the events team, so nothing here is happening, happening in a vacuum. We all work very closely together. So. Uh, so the year of content, you're going to hear me say the word content about a million times in the next couple of minutes. So just warn you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Wonder Twin Powers. Uh, so content, that'll be the engine for generating sales leads for our revenue programs. Uh, Megan mentioned we have some lofty goals, so I need some support there. Uh, generating page views for Drupal.org and um, just in general, plus uh, the, the pages that have ads on them. Marketing for Drupal jobs and web ads, technical marketing for Drupal, and I, I want to be careful to use the word technic, technical in there because um, there's going to be a lot of content going out that is it's technical in nature. It's not fluffy brand marketing. It's useful stuff that engineers can use because that's what they want. Um, Drupal 8, the lead up and launch of that, the marketing of Drupal cons, and then creating awareness of Drupal Association programs. So we have a pretty small team. Uh, the way we're going to maximize our efforts and budget is by curating, uh, in addition to creating content, so lots of curation, and also automating uh, marketing processes where we can. Hey, Joe, I have a quick question. Does curating mean um, you're taking content that Phase 2 and Acqui and whoever wrote and then just republishing it more or less on Drupal.org and providing a structure for that? Exactly. Cool. And like the weekly drop, do you get the, the weekly drop newsletter? No. Okay, so it's a newsletter letter of curated content. Um, That's it, fantastic. It's yeah. really, really great. In fact, like, you're going to like a couple slides here. Um, so the way we figured out what we were going to do is through a prioritization process, and I think you've seen a similar uh, <laughs> process outlined by Josh uh, that he led the engineering team through, but uh, looked at the board directives, our mission, resources and budget, all those types of things to come up with what we need to focus on for 2015. So first I'll talk about Drupal.org content. We want to make it a place that uh, people come to to discover content, learn, uh, move up the skills uh, ladder, and also monetize the site. So um, most of what we do, we're going to be trying to accomplish both those goals. So I talked a little bit about some of these landing pages. We're doing those by persona and also by um, industry or what you need to do. So there's an education resource guide, for example, uh, uh, managing media resource guide. Um, and all of these serve ads on them. So, and again, uh, Drupal.org has incredible Google juice. So uh, these pages move to the top of the organic search results very quickly. This is our content roadmap. So Kieran, this is sort of uh, a view into what we were talking about. This is not written in stone, it's pretty flexible, um, but these are the types of topic. We've done some research on keywords and how often those are searched. So this represents the most often searched 
terms. <clears throat> so that represents the greatest need. Andrew, to address your point, the, the blue lines there are you know Drupal 8 specific, but every other piece of content is just Drupal. Whoa. What happened? Back buttons. Yeah. Wow, I don't know, scoot ahead like 10 slides. Uh, yeah, so lots of TBD in there, but again. It's, and these it's are things that you're going to be looking on the web for or that you're writing? What, what we do is we some of it is written and some of it is gathered and again that we're curated where we're taking the best like the cream of the crop content and saying here is a great guide of resources that will help you learn about this thing Joel? and improve your skills Quick question. yes do you want that roadmap out there saying we're going to be publishing this kind of stuff go forth and proliferate I think it does make sense to publish the editorial calendar. Um, I think we definitely want to be cognizant of the content strategy process and how that works, but I think that's a reasonable approach, absolutely. And will help advertisers understand you know, when we're going to be focusing on certain things. Synergy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got uh, folks. <laughs> You've seen uh, this pyramid before. Um, all of these resource guides and all this content that we're doing is designed to move people up that skills ladder. Uh, we also want to be sure that we're maximizing uh, cross traffic. Uh, we've introduced search uh, referral banners. So, um, for example, if you go to search and you put in commerce on your results, you will see this referral banner over there on the right, which will guide you to the resource guide. So just another way to make sure people are getting to the right place. And then uh, cross-linking from other pages where it makes sense to uh, to guide people. Uh, so the Drupal newsletter. Um, this is something new that we're going to be starting soon. This is essentially uh, going to be a syndication of the weekly drop. Um, at least for you know for the time being, we're not sure uh, how long that we're going to use that model. But uh, the weekly drop is a high quality. Uh, newsletter. It's got great stuff in it. It's done by a guy named Bob Kepford, who a lot of you probably know. Um, and um, there actually is a Drupal newsletter existing that you can opt in on your Drupal.org profile. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know about it, but how many are currently um, checking? We have 57,000 subscribers to it. Um, the last time it was sent, though, was 2008. So uh, we, we expect that you know the first couple that we send out, we're going to see a little bit of a <laughs> we're going to see a little bit of drop off, and then we'll grow it back up again. But 57,000 is a pretty significant. Like the first time we send out and tell people about it, we expect this to be a great channel for it. So. We turn up the simple news module. Huh? Oh, maybe. Yeah, actually, it's probably when we moved the site to Drupal 6, and oh. we had no more simple news module. Yeah. Have you given any thoughts on localizing content since we're doing uh, conferences in places like Bogota? It's a, it's a good point. Um, the weekly drop, like this particular newsletter, is it's just curated from you know the phase twos and the form ones and people who do high quality blog posts, for example. Mm -hmm. So whatever they're written in, that's that's what they're going to appear in the weekly drop. Is the, it would it be worth trying to go out and find? High quality content in other languages? Yes, I think it would. I'm not sure how that would work in terms of resources. I don't think we're resources. Yeah. But I think, I think what you could do is you could take a content calendar or a content list and then rally people in the community to translate content and then sort of say 3% of our content was translated into Italian by the Italian community and 1% into the Slovenian community. And Four percent into the Hindi, you know. Somewhere, and and somewhere to like and and to Karen's point, um, when you showed the pyramid, um, these mm. days it's not uncommon right after the pyramid slide to see another slide that's a funnel. Mm -hmm. And and um, so there's, we're, you know, we're growing people's skills and then we're funneling them into following community beneficial activities. And um, I think that's missing so far in this. We're still really working on engagement metrics for our, uh, for our users. We're beginning to try to track um, across the community all the ways that people contribute and basically tally those up in a meaningful way so that we can see this is how much they've done. Um, and as we do that and we refine that, I think we are going to get to that idea of triggering, oh, they did this, and so we're going to try to engage them in this way. 
Um, a lot of that, though, we don't have built into our terms of service, so we're going to have to figure out how to do the messaging to someone who okay. does that action that would trigger the message to go to them. So, um, but, but localization is one of the low-hanging fruits for newbies who are trying mm -hmm. to learn, so they're already looking at everything they can find. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. Yeah, It'd be good to build out that localization team too, because for the whatever the big announcement is about Drupal 8, we're going to want that in every language, because one of the big features in Drupal 8 is multilingual. So, and yeah. we did this with Drupal 7, and it was just you know we wrote content, we sent it out to all the translation teams, they translated. But if we had a machine already going for that to translate stuff like this, then it would just be like, hey, people who already know how to translate things, here's the big one or whatever. Mm -hmm. We have some companies that would like to contribute that too. Uh, you know, partners in our community that would like to jump in and All do the translation. Are good contributors. Yeah. Uh, is someone taking notes for this meeting by any chance? Yes, mm -hmm. there are two people taking okay. notes. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just want to make sure that discussion didn't get lost. Um, and uh, just to, to uh, land the plane on this, there this will be inside a wrapper. So you'll notice there at the bottom, we can include Drupal Association messages. So if we need to promote uh, DrupalCon or other messages, we can do that in this vehicle as well. Um, and as far as the, the localization, this actually may be another good target for that too. We would like to introduce the Drupal blog, um, which it would be a new content type on Drupal.org. Uh, it would have a lot of the same kind of articles and how-tos that you would find in the weekly drop. It would be some, somewhat similar to Drupal Planet, but much more curated. I think I counted 20 items in Planet over the last two and a half days. This would have far fewer. Can we literally just take the weekly drop and paste it into a blog note? Um, no, because the weekly drop, when you see all the items in there, all those headlines go directly back to wherever the original content was. So it's so, the planet, really, the weekly drop. Yeah, it's curated, it's curated planet, planet, though, and that's what you were saying you need. Sort of. He doesn't. He doesn't always go directly to planet and grab the stuff. Though he finds it all over the place. Not everything goes to planet, but it is like yeah. planet. Yeah, it is conceptually. Now, if we were to just take what he's done here and try to put everything on Drupal.org, which I would love, um, we would. I think we would need to go back to the authors and get their permission to do that. And I think that's doable. It's potentially time consuming up front. You know, if we get permission from an author and say, hey, everything you post, can we put it on Drupal.org and we'll link back to your site, give you, you know, some credit there. I think that's definitely doable. And potentially profile as well, which is another great way to show community engagement. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that would go on your org profile. Like, exactly. you've contributed 18 articles to the Drupal blog. Exactly. Right. Yep. Okay, so measuring success, uh, site traffic increases, engagement, clicks, et cetera, and Drupal newsletter uh, opt ins and subscriptions. So, that's how we plan to measure that. So promoting Drupal, this is a one slide summary of an entire deck that a lot of you have seen. So I tried to cram a lot of small words on here, but essentially uh, the way I've thought about this is we have phase one, which we're in now, which is the lead up to RC1. Um, so that's a lot of that foundational content that uh, Holly referred to earlier. Uh, resource guides, amplifying and syndicating third party Drupal 8 content. And once we get that Drupal no newsletter fired up, that's going to really allow us to increase that uh, audience because the weekly drop has tons of great Drupal 8 content. <clears throat> and also promoting uh, Drupal 8 Accelerate Sprints and, and wins there and results from that program. Phase two is RC1 through the release. Um, and we've got some plans for additional content there. Um, webinars, some papers, uh, I've got budget to do that. I don't want to I want to wait until we're closer to launch to, to get those done, though, just to create some new kind of buzz around it. I will be leading the PR effort and um, promoting all the community stuff they do, release parties and whatever else they dream up. And then uh, phase three is a very important part of the launch uh, process where you're uh, demonstrating momentum, so amplifying any content that demonstrates momentum. That could be case studies of an implementation, could be the numbers of downloads, uh, usage, 
anything that demonstrates that, hey, this thing is a success and lots of people are using it, you should go use it too. Is, is there um, some thought leadership in here where you're kind of really putting put in the future where the, where the people are looking for, I don't know, what's, what's, the, what's the future of the web going to be? What's the future of digital going to be? Uh, I think we can do that in the in some of this content that we're talking about. But I think that type of information really works in papers. Um, so yeah, that's that's actually a really good thought. I think that's a great um, a great way to approach that, or at least an element to it. I think there's a certain part of the audience which is Drupal aware and Drupal savvy, mm -hmm. you really want to reach outside that box. Yeah, and get people who are looking at the future, and then have them back to Drupal. Yeah. So let's let's talk. Some more that. generic search, search. So, for instance, there's been some great there's been some great uh, content about um, user driven data, user driven identity. Companies that get it, companies that don't. They all they're always it's a, their vehicle is always their website. So you know there's a whole topic there that would be interesting to web designers that we're not touching. Yeah, I think. I think Drupal 8 is a way to get to kind of that future stuff. I think that may actually be a whole other category of, you know, content, if you will, like what, okay, we're, we're at Drupal 8, but what is the future of Drupal and the future of the web? I know you, you talk about that in your, in your uh, DrupalCon uh, talks. Um, but yeah, that, that's a great point. I think that is absolutely something we should do. Um, just to, I think it's a matter of how we resource it and how much we focus on it. Another thing I want to point out on this slide, and I don't know if you guys are aware about this, but the intent is that once Drupal 8 launches, every six months we're going to have a new launch. Right. And that is going to include new features, and it's going to need a similar ramp-up effort. It doesn't have the the um, impetus behind it that the 8.0 oval launch does, but we're going to need to basically, this thing is going to be cyclical. Right. Um, so I just want to make sure that's on the radar. Because um, it's, it's a great point. It's actually a really important one because it's, fundamental change that's coming with Drupal right. 8. Yeah. It, it's not going to be five years till the next one. It's only going to be another six months. Yeah, that, that's a great point. I mean, it's going to be a whole new process that people are going to have to follow and get used to. That, I mean, in a way, it will be fantastic. There's going to be this regular cadence, but there's going to be some overhead that comes with that. So. Um, creating content that helps them through that, I think, is yeah. is important. Well, in a lot of ways, that content could, you know, we're talking about basically point release content, right? So right. it's sort of what what additional things have been added to the to the core, if you will, since the since the last time. So it, it could be lighter, right? And it could yeah, follow a, a pretty lighter. standard format, which is, you know, refer back to you know said content on major launch on major release launch right but you know add in these release notes which are you know sort of marketing release notes which are features that have been added with some degree of for user friendliness to describing what they add to the to the base or something like right that. and i, I think you the just good news is that model with the different features right as they come yeah, there's a lot of software that works this way so it's not going to be exactly. a new concept yeah. for a lot of people it's a so. pretty com common concept right Uh, so brand name case studies. Case studies are really great because they they touch on so many things. They touch on technical objectives, business objectives. A lot of times, uh, the customer will talk about uh, you know the community as one of the reasons that they adopted Drupal. So um, the case studies that are on Drupal.org today are great. There are not a whole lot of brand names that someone would immediately recognize. Um, so these would be written by staff, uh, and they would be, you know, immediately recognizable brands, and they would uh, be a little bit more skewed toward the business and marketing objectives. They would have technical objectives in there as well, but uh, probably not to the extent that a lot of the case studies that you see on Drupal.org today have. So this is trying to reach out to that evaluator audience, the marketing, uh, the engineering management, and above. Uh, audience versus your developer. We just talked about adding Pfizer. <laughs> this yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Have you got any um, kind of heartstring case studies? Heartstring. Heartstring. Yeah. So like a lot of a lot of, a lot of developers, you know, want to make they want to create the web in the future, right? Or they want to they do it because they want to make the world a better place. And so when they see organizations that are explicitly trying to make 
the world a better place using their stuff that's a big motivator for them. So anything along those lines. There's not just value, not just brand recognition, but value alignment. Yeah, like yeah. the SBCA makes it easier to report lost dogs, yeah. or the UN nonprofit or an NGO yeah. that's like saving X number of children over the year. Yeah, and I, I think uh, you know I've got two media companies and an automotive company here, but I think it would be important to um, represent several industries or you know approaches, and I think. Uh, you know, ASPCA is a great example, or Amnesty International of something we abs absolutely should do. I don't want to do like four all in the same industry. Um, also, but, different countries, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't mean these logos to say uh, this, this is the ones we're doing, great. but just an example. Maybe yeah. different companies that have done the work. Or different companies. No, but I think this is this is really good stuff. I think, but this is literally, we could literally crank out a couple of these a week. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we, we need to figure out how do we get to, like, how do we produce 200 of those each year across, like, you know, case studies in Belgium, case studies in Australia, like localized to the markets there, like, you know, from all the different players in the Drupal community. Mm -hmm. there's, like, two, I mean, there's a lot of mid sized or smaller shops that don't that aren't savvy enough to create their own content and case studies and things like that, but maybe you guys could fill that void. Yeah, absolutely. And in no, fact, the way business. we've reached out is through uh, <laughs> groups. I mean, so so how what's, the, how aggressive, I guess, are we in this section? So I would say if we had a full-time writer working just on this and a full-time designer working just on this, we could probably crank out two a week, but we have like 10% of one person and 5% of another. But the Google community is really good at patterns. Mm. Yeah. Right. And so it's about you know it's about creating a pattern that's scalable. Right. There's always the the answer is always like if we have more people we can do more. So I think the challenge to think about is how do we create a pattern that the Drupal community does. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. And, and also because we you and I emailed about this from the last board meeting we brought at this point and we sent you some examples of stuff. But the problem is also the quality. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So quantity is not the problem. Right. Yeah. We can get. We can get a ton of, of Aikido studios up there. Yeah, right? there are. Yoga, you look at there yoga are a lot studios. Of there's yeah. a lot of them right. being submitted. But that doesn't necessarily <laughs> represent the power of Drupal per se. Right. And so my problem is I'd rather have five that are done in the last three years that are for organizations that my mom would recognize than yeah. have a thousand that are all done that are just tiny little. Sites. Can, well, I, yeah. can I just call because, because, because it's, it's one o'clock? Yeah, yeah, I sure, want to say, sure. like, I think I, we hear the scale request for that, and we can definitely sort of see if there's some some way to scale that up with, with community work, but I think we're going to want to find that right balance between scaling it up and then getting to Jeff's point, right, like a, a quality case study out of it. Yeah. Sounds good. And crisis communications. Um, we can't get around it. There are going to be things that come up, so we need to participate in that process advise and uh, provide counsel on that um, and you know again we just don't know what's going to come up so we need to be ready to to help out uh, when that happens uh, so measuring success there um, content engagement uh, Drupal 8 downloads for Drupal 8 and articles about Drupal 8 on the on the PR front I, again I've got a whole deck on Drupal 8 with with uh, separate metrics on it so. Events uh, and other types of marketing. Our recent survey showed, not surprisingly, that most people would go to DrupalCon, every DrupalCon, if their company paid. So uh, that's where it makes the most sense to spend our time is trying to convince people to convince their boss and convince uh, managers to send their employees. Um, we talked about the European event co-marketing. We're working on that. A uh, couple of events there to target evaluators. Still working on um, exactly which events we're going to target. Oh, really? Yeah, we'll talk. talk. We'll talk. Um, so measuring success there, uh, event attendees at our own events. Again, content engagement, you can see that on everything. And then um, leads from the European events. So the companies that buy into those booths, uh, we get a share of the leads that are generated. Uh, we are going to put a focus on lead generation for our revenue programs. Um, and this is a, a your typical content marketing uh, model here where you use content to attract uh, your audience, use forms and calls to action to qualify them, you hand those over to sales, and uh, hopefully they close. Um, 
And let's see, there's another. Yeah, so the, the types of content, again, uh, email, webcast, videos, anything that we can put a form in front of them. And, I'm, you know, I know our community does not like forms. No one likes forms. Um, but in reality, it is the way that you generate leads and qualify them for sales and make the whole process more efficient. So, yeah, exactly. Drupal Association, Marcom, uh, Grow Email, that's our number one driver, but do it in a way that doesn't annoy people and cause unsubscribes. We are going to move our email newsletter to twice a month versus once a month because I think we've got plenty of content to do that. Uh, so that gives us more uh, inventory to uh, talk about what we have going on and also offer more ways to opt in. Uh, continue to grow audiences for all of our channels, blogs, social channels, etc. Uh, measuring success there is reach and engagement. And last but not least, membership uh, acquisition. We want to um, leverage the great asset that we have in Drupal.org to help drive membership. <clears throat> I'm, I'm still convinced to this day that a lot of people who sign up for a, a Drupal.org profile think that they're a Drupal Association member. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and I, I, I can tell that anecdotally and when I go to DrupalCon and I see everyone has a DA member designation on their badge, and I know that there's not that many members. Um, uh, plugging um, uh, Drupal Association member at camps, we've got our video, so we can't afford to ship postcards and stickers everywhere, but they, we can't ask them to play our, our video, and we, we do. Uh, we've done lots of different types of, of um, campaigns to try to get people to sign up at DrupalCon. Some have worked better than others, so we're going to continue to test and optimize in 2015. And the slider, um, the Sorry. slider did not work. Um, <laughs> so it's impossible to take what we were doing before and and do what we we're doing with the slider and compare exactly apples to oranges. But we do know that when you take the default amount, so when you hit the page, there's a default amount for what is the suggested amount you join at that from before we introduced the slider to this the slider dropped by about 22 <laughs> percent the default amount dropped. So the in default. other words they used the slider to go neg to go less than the suggested amount exactly not, not more the than the suggested button. amount right yeah. Yeah. so the if if we saw a spike in volume like oh wow people are spending less but hey we've got all these members you know that weren't in the tent before that would be one thing but we're just not seeing that spike um, there is a better trajectory uh, but I think that has more to do with the campaigns that we've been running versus versus the slider so I would challenge you to not say that this didn't work I would challenge you to say we learned a couple of things and there's more there's more to learn I would I would agree with that but we've been using it for uh, a year and a half ish and the trends are pretty clear so I think we've learned what we need to learn and so we need to move on <laughs> that, that, that's a win oh yeah oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely. yeah. So part, of I don't, the, part of why we did the slider was to address um, places where money means different things than it does in, develop, in uh, developed countries yeah. right? and um, another way to do this would be to tell where the request is coming from and give them a decent offer yeah we looked at that so we wanted to make sure that it wasn't getting dragged down because now all of a sudden because you could drag the slider down to five dollars like everyone from south america and africa was joining and that was not the case either right like the distribution the geographic distribution was similar so that's exactly. not happening either so we can still accommodate that by providing a blank box for people to write in five us dollars or five euros or whatever it is um, but yeah, exactly. And the the example there on the right is just an example. That's not the that's not what the new price set would look like. But I, I think we will move back to this type of a price price set. Now, will that mean uh, that we're automatically going to see some increase? Uh, I would say no. I think to your point, it's all an experiment, and we'll just have to see how it uh, how it turns out. The, the circle of friends one, um, I think, is really interesting. It's a kind of membership that I've thought of we should have for a while is um, a local community who might like pass the hat around and throw in just a couple of dollars each rather than $20 each. Mm -hmm. And then that 
that local meetup could be a particular kind of member. Like they're not an they're not an organization, you know, they're not a company, they're not an individual, but they're a circle a of group group or friends. something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's actually a great point. Something we should look at. Uh, we're also going to start automated email drip campaigns to members. This is not to annoy, but to stay in touch with them today. People sign up, or not not today because we've started rolling these out, but uh, in the past, somebody would join and they would get the newsletter, but uh, other than that, they wouldn't hear from us and they wouldn't get any advice on how to take advantage of their membership or different ways to engage with the community. Um, so this would change that. Um, some of these topics you see on here will be changing, but this is an example of the type of things that we'll be sending out on a monthly basis to members, helping them to uh, take advantage of their membership and engage. And, and again, we'll going back to the yeah. yeah. Um, Joe, we've got in the community working group queues, uh, celebrate your Drupal day that's sort of been there, mm -hmm. you know, languishing for a long time. I think that would be a really nice, like, that on the day you join Drupal.org, 12 months it. later, five years later. That's a great idea. I love it. And it's a great opportunity to go back to them and say, hey, Renew. <laughs> <laughs> um, measuring success, member count, member retention. Retention is something we really need to focus on. Um, we did some work in 2014 that got us part of the way there, but I think we've got some work to do. We want to get it up to 80% or so. I will say 75% is really solid. If you look at membership organizations, it's a really solid rate. So. It's definitely better than we were doing before that. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. We had no system, no way. We, a couple years ago, we even just realized that we didn't even ask anyone yeah. to renew <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. The Emails or yeah, yeah, the like, software didn't support hey, it. Hey, how about free submitting that form? These were like big <laughs> errors for us. We were like, oh, it's going to get worse every year until we do something. So that's it. Thanks so much for listening. Awesome. I have one other suggestion. If you don't mind. So first of all, the, the guys have a lot of things going on, which is awesome. Um, like one thing we should maybe if you have thought about it, but like can we identify the top five? Website. So a lot, so the, the thing is, a lot of the content is on D2O. So how can we get great content outside of D2O? Maybe for each of the personas, web developers, I don't know, CIOs, what are their top five websites that they read? And then they write a program to get really great content on, I don't even know what the best web developer blog is, mm -hmm. but like, like have a steady stream of Drupal-related mm -hmm. articles hard or on external sites. Yeah. Yeah, but because you know, <clears throat> yeah, I need to get off the island. And go totally agree. It, I mean, it all comes down to budget and resources, but I, I think that's definitely a worthwhile effort, especially when Drupal 8 comes around. That's going to be an opportunity for us to get out there for sure. Um, well, so, since we're already we're over our hour, um, and thank oh, let me say thank you, Joe, first. Thank you, Joe. Yay. Thank you for Can I suggest that we just take that um, licensing working group to the executive committee to figure out how to follow up on that, the best course of action for that? Um, and then also, um, we seem to have lots of inconsistencies with timings at the meeting, so maybe that's a topic I can convene the executive committee around to discuss as well. Just how do we time box a little bit better and make sure we get through our agenda? Okay. Awesome. Quick correction since my team corrected me and I feel the need to pass it on. Our time to first response is 450 milliseconds. Thank you. And that is a the 3.08 is an average of all page loads for the entire site. So Not we have some really page. slow pages that actually bring that down over okay. just the home page. <clears throat> or you're just getting such great traffic that yeah. it's competing this ability to get the good response times. All right. So I don't think there's any other topics on the agenda then, right? Nope. All right. Well, I think that wraps up the. Um, the board meeting. Thanks, everyone. Awesome job. Thanks, everyone. Join.